This is the Samsung 970 Evo. It is the new kit on the block in what is probably the most established SSD brand in the world right now. It's a pretty impressive SSD, comes in at a decent price point. So let's take a look at its performance and if it's worth your money. So first things first, a quick tour of the drive. Obviously this is a single sided drive, which means that it obviously can have M.2 heat sinks attached relatively easily with potentially decent effects. I was actually using the Gigabyte's X470 Gaming 7 Wi-Fi board, which has these heat sinks on it, and it actually does a decent job of keeping it cool since this drive and the Samsung Phoenix controller that is on it can get a bit toasty. Samsung are offering these in a wide variety of storage configurations, starting with a 250 gig I have here, but also offering 500, one terabyte, and two terabyte offerings, and each one of them has a different overall lifespan. Now, the general expected lifespan of the drive is 1.5 million hours, which I think equates to something like 171 years, which is kind of impressive, but the actual endurance of the drive does depend on its uh, storage configuration. So the 250 gig starts at 150 terabytes written, whereas the two terabyte has something like 1,200 terabytes written, which is pretty impressive. Now, of course, there is a pro variant of this as well if you need a bit faster, but the expected speeds for these, as you can hopefully see on the screen in terms of the synthetic benchmarks, you're looking at around 3,300, 3,400 megabytes per second reads, uh, and in terms of writes, you're looking at 1.3 to 1.5 gigabytes per second uh, in terms of, of those writes, and obviously depending on what type of writes you're doing uh, will depend on the speed that it does it, but these are some impressive benchmark results, and keep up with even some of the other high-end drivers from other manufacturers, such as the Adata SX8200 that I reviewed recently. Now in might of uh, real-world kind of test, which is copying the GTA 5 game files to the drive again, reading from and writing to the drive, which really stresses the controller quite a bit, and there's also a number of both really small and really large game files available for it to copy so it can try at its different speeds. Uh, and I was actually really impressed with the drive. It was seeing peaks of about one gigabyte per second with the average being somewhere about the six, 700 megabyte per second range, which is incredibly impressive for a drive, especially the Evo, which is normally a more sort of budget oriented drive that isn't necessarily as fast. So I'm very impressed with this one. Now I did mention that a data SSD I reviewed recently in a comparison to this one. I would mention that that one is actually a little bit cheaper than this one. And the Samsung brand normally carries a bit of an extra, I guess, value add if you like. Although they do often have potentially better warranties. This one is a five year or 150 terabytes written warranty, which uh, obviously is whichever comes first. And obviously, as I mentioned, depending on the uh, storage configuration of the drive will depend on what the terabytes written warranty is. So if you have a two terabyte drive, that's, as I said, 1,200 terabytes written, whereas the 250 gig is only 150. So to answer the question that I ask in all of these videos, would I put this in my rig? And the answer is yes, I'd be more than happy to. I'd ideally like an M.2 heatsink on the board when you are using it because the, these drives do get pretty hot. And as I said, that Phoenix controller is, is definitely on the uh, kind of higher end side, but also the heat output, so you kind of higher end side as well. So just bear that one in mind, it's not necessary. It may slightly thermally throttle after long writes to it, but reading and you know, if you're just installing your, uh, you know, your OS on it and a couple of games, for example, then you're likely going to be plenty fine even without a heatsink. I do overall highly recommend the drive. Make sure that you check around for other drives that may have uh, similar performance warranties and all that sort of stuff like that Adata one, but otherwise it is still a high recommendation from me. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Is this your next SSD or are you sticking with SATA drives just because of the price difference? Let me know in those comments down below. Of course, if you want to check out the drive, take a look at the link in the description down below. That will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and where you watch this. If you want to check out more videos, there will be some others over here for you. And if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and actually Saturday basis for tech FAQs, then make sure you check out the links in the description down below, including the Amazon and affiliate links. There's also a Patreon if you want to support me directly, and of course, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button as well. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, and we'll see you all in the next video.